Yesterday I finished by saying two horrible cancers fell upon the Muslims. These were in the name of God and the religion of God. Both these are presented as if they have been sanctioned, sanctioned by Allah. The first one of the cancer is that of the Murjia. Murjia was the sect that is now responsible for the division and majority of the Ahl Sunnah uh, Madai fall into the Murjia sect. It was created by the Umayyads, consisting of Islamic scholars and clergymen. These are basically scholars, clergymen, who have no positions, and they have not oppressed anyone, but they have no position. They study in the corners of the mosques and schools, but they also teach. Their rationale is very simple that anyone, sinful or pure, anyone who has done a wrong, a deceitful thing, created a conspiracy, or committed a crime, must have hope in the mercy and forgiveness of Allah. He must have hope because Allah has said, there are people who are hopeful in God's commands. They quote this, uh, the ayat in Surah Al-Barad, Chapter 9, verses 105 and 106. It is this hope that allows God's forgiveness and mercy and compassion, that God will forgive any crime. Therefore, according to them, and this is the Umayyad philosophy, which is prevalent today as well, that it is forbidden for anyone who, who is himself sinful to call such criminals by bad name even if they are likes of Muawiyah, Yazid, and Abu Jahl, you cannot say anything wrong against them. Say, let God judge them. <laughs> On the other hand, when you call a criminal and an oppressor, uh, when you call a criminal and uh, an oppressor, a traitor, and condemn him, and call another person oppressed, a slave, it is as if you claim to be God. In other words, if you call somebody an oppressor, and then say somebody is being oppressed, and you have a discussion on it, they say, why do you play God? It's not your business. Keep quiet. <coughs> so you do not have the right to judge the oppressor or the traitor. And the traitor. To summarize what I've said just now, it is important to understand. They say, you want to establish the balance of justice? Are you God? Do you want to excuse people and clear their accounts before God does? Let them wait for the Day of Judgment. If you watch Islam Channel, I have watched it, I used to watch it. They come and say, and they talk, the question is asked them about Yazid. The Mulanas will sit there and say, why do you judge him? You mustn't say anything against him. You must keep quiet. We are not allowed to condemn the criminal. We are not permitted to stand against this or that group. We should accept all of them. We must be patient and leave the punishment of everyone to God. This is the problem which arises from the saying of the Murjia, leave everything to God. This disease of hope, or the cancer of Murjia, paralyzes the second generation of Islam. We have not had sufficient training in the school of Islam. This is the second generation, right, before, uh, until the time of Mawiyah who have now had no training because everything has been changed. Okay? Their school of thought has been changed. Their sunnah has been changed and all that. And they have no training in the real prophetic teachings of the al -Bayt. And they have not received any information or from the times of the Prophet ﷺ or from Ali or from the faithful among the Muhajirun and the Ansar. Thus they are obliged to receive the Islamic teaching second hand. Now this is second hand teaching. It is for this very reason that the awareness and understanding and religious spirits are permanently poisoned with the propaganda of the Murjia who are backed by the ruling regime. On the one hand, we those who follow the truth, Muslims, who sense their responsibility to enjoin good and forbid evil, and these are injunctions in the Quran, the ayats in the Quran which I will not go into, while the thick-headed people who extend themselves in imbibing both God 
and devil exist side by side. The other opposite says the devil, the good and the bad exist side by side. So do not, do not question. Now, the second cancer is the cancer of Jabr, which also grows in the same period. The school of Jabr is the first school of thought that is introduced by the Umayyads as a divine philosophy. We are going to see what corruption is hidden behind saintly and sacred faces. Divine faith means, as the Quran tells us, God is the absolute commander, Surah Al-Anam and Surah Yusuf, verses 57 and 40 respectively. The religious authorities extend this to mean that whatever suffering occurs in the, in the universe takes place according to God's will. That means if you have a suffering, I'll come and hit you, it is God. Whatever position he has done is according to God's will. Whatever action one takes, a corrupt, pure, criminal, non-criminal, whether one is executed or is the executioner, all are determined by God's will. Whether one is a slave or a master, the ruled or the ruler belong to God. It is God who gives power and he takes it away. It is God who kills and brings it to being. It is God who bestows honor and disgrace. In short, no one has any rights whatsoever. Yeah. That means everything is done by God. Then what is Jabbar? One of the names of God used in the Quran is Al-Jabbar, the compeller, in Surah Al-Hashir, verse 23. They use this word, the compeller, to use it, misinterpret the words that the faith is ordained by God or there is divine compulsion. The Murjia have held that it is God alone who judges and they are known to be called as the Jabriya and to subscribe to a fatalism according to which only the judgment for sinners but everything is ordained by God. So you ask the aspect of fatalism. Everything is, 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 is done by God. We have no control. We have no intellect to think. We must do whatever God wills us to do, good or bad, it's side by side. Do not question. So the attraction of Jabr had a powerful influence upon the faithful Muslims who interpreted the words of Quran with the aid of Hadith which are automatically produced by the lights of Abu Huraira in the Hadith making machines of the Green Palace of Malia. <laughs> It was explained to them that the Omayyads rule because God gave them power. <coughs> if the good are destroyed and the bad rule, it is based on a high wisdom. They call it the high wisdom of God that Maria is ruling. They call it the high wisdom of God that Ali is defeated. It is our, out of our hands. Therefore, any protest, you cannot have any protest whatsoever. In summary, now it's 60 years after Hijra. All powers in the possession, all powers are in the possession of the oppressive, oppressive rulers. Values are determined solely by them. They have already created the basis for the new religion that must be followed. Everything about the Sunnah has been changed. People have been brainwashed. People follow their things. Whoever is whoever stands up is either executed or there are those who are bribed to accept what is given as status quo now. If none of these are efforts prove successful, then the faith is cut off by the sword. It is this power that Imam Hussain must, must face, a power that controls religion and thought, which has at its disposal the Quran, wealth, weaponry, armies, tools of propaganda, and inheritance of the Prophet <laughs> Inshallah, tomorrow we will discuss what options are open to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Salawat.